Some board games deserve new titles, and we're here to write them. Welcome to Tabletop Shop. to the tabletop shop i am one of your co-hosts mr nate clark and seated mostly halfway across the world from me is your other co-host mr cody pennington yeah how's it going nate do you think memes are dead you know what cody i feel like we were just having this discussion recently and we both thought they were until you proved it proved us wrong with a little bit of what do you call that prescience is that what is that what it's called in dune where he kind of like uh, has prescience, prescience i believe yeah his glimpses of the future um you had a you had a prescient moment I guess, right before that conversation. Indeed. So, AKA luck. AKA dat boy. But let's, yeah, let's not even provide context, even though you just did. Let's provide Nate. content. <laughs> even better. How is it going, man? It's not like we've been talking for the last 50 minutes trying to get our recording to work. Man, it seems like we go through stretches where things work really well. And then there's just like a random hiccup for absolutely no reason. And yeah, and then we then we hiccup. I mean, you kind of change time. countries like once a month, so there's also I that. Do, <laughs> I do do that. Maybe maybe my laptop is just not able to record audio in the Netherlands. I don't know. Maybe it just has that in you know built into its software. I don't know. Maybe your laptop is racist. It definitely is. It definitely is. It's like Netherlands. Mm, I'm not. I'm not working here, yo. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't talk like that, though. I don't think. <laughs> okay. Well, Let's do this thing. Let's talk about the stuff. Nate, what have you even been playing well, this week? This is actually a first time for me that this has happened, I think. I could be wrong. Huh. In I don't know how okay. what is it? What episode is this? Like is it like 16, 17. 17. 17. 17. Go us. I think maybe the first time in 17 episodes I have not played a new game since the last since the last episode, I like I like I haven't wow. I haven't played something that I haven't been mentioning every single podcast for the past ten recordings. Uh, yeah. So I really don't have I really don't have anything to say except that I almost scored a, a new high score in Seven Wonders Duel, and I almost Ooh, set an all time. Really? Record. What's your What's your highest score? In that uh, that's actually just what I'm going to look up. Um, give me a second. So what happened was. I think the very last card that was flipped in the third round was mm-hmm. the military card that Anna needed to beat me in a military victory. And ah. so she got it and she beat me. But we still like drafted, we still like kind of drafted the last two cards just for fun. Cause I was like, I feel like I have a really high score here. And the score I would have had was 88. <laughs> oh, but it doesn't count. It doesn't, know, it count. doesn't count. I don't, I know. That's sad. My my high score is seventy four, which feels low. I feel like I've scored higher than that. I, Maybe I just haven't updated I it. I think I've scored. I think my highest is eighty three or eighty two or something. But yeah, I was close to eighty eight. It would have been it would have been sweet, man. Man, uh, been, that's all. It, that's, beautiful. That's all I have to talk about. <laughs> okay, I have almost as pathetic of a list for you today. I played Everdell, and okay. the thing of note that came from that is. I actually ended up moving Everdell down a place or two in yes, my list after it playing. Happens. It <laughs> begins. Um, well, it's it's like I'm finally starting to accept and recognize that the, the the core function of the game is not perfect. There it it kind of just comes down to play some cards, try to fit as many cards as you can, try to get as many combos of buildings that are going to let you play critters as possible constructions that's the word not buildings uh and I, yeah i think i'm just getting like a little little burnt out by it i haven't even played it that many times or that many times recently expansions help they make it more interesting but it still feels like you you can get to a certain point of efficiency like you're doing super well but then you're just kind of stuck with your number of workers and the number of places you can fill those 15 mm. spots we, so, yeah, I, I guess it, it's just sort of, it, it holds a mixed place in my heart because I, I love the the art and the theme, the, the personality of the game is yeah, definitely. perhaps, Nate, one of the most compelling games I own in mm, that sense. Okay. 
but I'm I'm starting to cool down a little bit on the the core function of the game. I think I think we we almost disagree totally, which is funny because I really I'm not a huge fan of the game. I think it's I think every time I've played it, it's dropped for me. Um, hmm. And actually, that's because every time I've played it, I've played with like another expansion or whatever. And I think uh. the expansions <laughs> pull away from the experience. Actually, I like the core experience of the game. I actually like just the base game. And yet it's not my favorite game still. Uh, and it, it kind of has some drawbacks. But the base game in and of itself is actually, I mean, it's meaty, it's thinky, it's a little, a little long. But ultimately, it's a really good design. And I feel like the expansions pull away from that design and they add mm. too much fluff on the outsides, too many things that convolute yeah. what you're trying to do. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's, that's how I feel about the game. So every time I've played it, yeah. I've, I've kind of enjoyed it less, I think. Yeah, I think the main problem with it is it doesn't have a good mill mechanism, wherein this is a, a card-based game where most of the cards are all unique. Sure, there's like multiple copies of a lot of the cards, I guess. But you, there, there's not really a good standard mechanism to where you can be able to sort through a bunch of the cards. You can get some card abilities down, and depending on the game you're playing, there might be a special worker space that's available that helps you get more cards. But if you don't have those, you're kind of just stuck, and like you can turn up like six farms in the meadow, and you're like, well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't really need another farm. But can there is some way to refresh the middle though the river is it the river no that's meadow i don't know there's there's some way to refresh the middle hmm. right we have to play with the trade route expansion nate <laughs> well you know the expansions don't really they, they're just all fluff so you know oh, you you missed my era of kingdoms reference come on wait what it was the, the oh the, the trade era of kingdoms <laughs> <laughs> adds oh. like nothing to the game i thought, I thought you were serious okay. uh, no nah. it adds the trade anyway. route board yeah <laughs> Yeah. And more cards. So yeah, played Everdell. Still still a fantastic game. Still in my top 10, but it, it dropped but a, a space or two. Less in your top 10. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I played half a game, because it's not <laughs> finished yet. Uh, Kirsten and I have to get back to it. We're busy, man. Like I no, said, we've been are. working 11-hour days this last week. But uh, we played the first half of Brass Birmingham, Okay, which is rising in my list, okay. because it's, just, it's such a good game. And that's all I'll say about that. I agree. I agree. We've talked a, we've talked about brass a lot. It's, it's yeah. had its due on this playlist, I think, or on this podcast, I think. So, it it did do done have its due. All right. Well, uh, with <laughs> with that measly uh, <laughs> set list of games we played this week, let's move on to our game of the week. And uh, believe it or not, our game of the week has been mentioned already. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it! <laughs> well, let me just let me take this moment then to remind our audience that this is the most interesting show on the internet, as certified by the most interesting show on the internet committee, which I founded yesterday. Huh? Yeah. Is this like your other, Actu last episode you did something like this episode is sponsored by something and then you're like, just kidding, no it's not. Is this like another one of those gags? Well, I'm sure, man. I mean... What are you talking about? That's what well, I'm here's at. the deal. I don't know how you actually <laughs> register a committee or what that looks like, but I decided that that's my new priority in life so that I can promote our own show. Sounds good? Um... I, I I can't I don't I don't think I can agree to what you said because I'm not even really sure what you said earlier. So no, that's fine. How about how about we just talk about our game of the let's week? Let's do let's do that, Cody. Let's just yeah, let's do that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you, what is our game of the week? You maybe? you interest you introduced me to our game of the week, and you know what? I didn't like it that much the first couple times I played it with you, and that is Seven Wonders Duel. I. I, I do not accept responsibility for that, though. For what? For me not liking it? I beat you one of the times. You yeah. even let me beat you one of the times. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, and then somebody else gave it to me while I was over here. And it was so... Well, when I say over here, I mean in Europe. And so it was one of, kind of, one of the few games that was really available to me, readily available. 
And so I've played it a ton <laughs> over the past like four or five months. <laughs> and so, yeah, it's just risen a bunch because, because it is such a great design, I guess. Um, and so I, it's something that I have gained a lot more love for than I did the couple times we played it. I think I, I, think I recognized it's intelligent kind of, the, the intelligence behind the design when I played it with you a couple times, but it didn't really captivate me until I started playing it more and seeing kind of more of what the game had to offer. Hmm. What's your story? Did you just buy it on a on a whim because you thought like because <laughs> it was highly rated or whatever? Here's the thing that that was that's why I've just been kind of silent as I was trying to remember when I even got got it in the first place. For some reason, I was thinking that you had told me about it or you had introduced me to it. That's, <laughs> that's how twisted my little brain is. Maybe, I'm, but now I I can I can remember teaching it to you. Yeah. No, you definitely did. Maybe I mentioned. Maybe I was the one who like mentioned it to you or something the first time. Like, hey, there's a dual version of seven wonders two player version whatever you know well actually i think it may have been the dice tower because i just kept hearing everybody freaking out about how there's a for the first time ever or perhaps the first time ever a two player version of a game that is significantly more popular than the base game or the original game Hmm. and so i think i just kept hearing that and finally was like okay 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 i'll just i'll get this i'm not a huge fan of seven wonders i haven't I guess I've only played it once, but let's give this old Sim Wonders dual thing a try. And try it I did. And it, now, where is it in my, my You know, it sounds photo? kind of silly, doesn't it? It's, it sounds like a money grab, a cash grab, doesn't it? Like, mm-hmm. it sounds like, oh yeah, let's take this popular game and make a two-player version. It sounds kind of gimmicky, actually. And it doesn't now, because it's been done so well a few times. But I feel like uh, the, maybe the first time you would hear that they're making a two-player version of a really popular game, it almost seems like it might feel kind of like a gimmicky thing that they're doing just yeah. to try and bring in more, sucker more people that like the base game into buying another thing that has Seven Wonders printed on it. But it's definitely yeah. not that. It's like, well, kind of a song. Well, <coughs> <laughs> well said, Cody. I'll That's try Cody's that again. review. Let's put that on the box. For yeah. Seven Wonders still. Well, let's cut it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. It's well, it's kind of like along the same lines of Settlers of Catan, the dice game, or just taking something and adding a something that's not normally a card game and making it a card game, or making it a dice game, or whatever. Yeah. Where you think like, okay, this is just them trying to sell a different version of the game. I'm not really that <laughs> interested. But Seven Wonders Duel really is different. You might have to speak more to the differences because again, I've only actually played Seven Wonders once that I can remember. Mm-hmm. But there is no like pyramid card drafting scheme <laughs> definitely not in uh in seven wonders i know i know you're passing around hands of cards to draft from but seven wonders duel you've got i should just i guess explain the game here for you have three different eras that you play through and in each era you're playing with a deck of cards that are available the cards that you can acquire and put into your kingdom are either resources or they might be these military cards that attack the the other player um they might basically just better your economy with different functions, I guess. It's actually pretty simple, the different functions that the cards have. But you're trying to compete to use those cards for money or add them to your kingdom or use them to build one of your seven wonders. Although there's only... <laughs> one of your four I wonders. I guess there's actually eight wonders you play with in the game. Yeah, four players per person. <laughs> four times <laughs> four. <laughs> <laughs> this is also also on Cody's review of Seven Wonders Duel. One of my favorite four players per person games. <laughs> I'm done. I'm, you say some stuff now, man. That's all I got. Um, it's 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 so Seven Wonders was a I don't know immensely popular card drafting game. Still is, I guess. But it was kind of one of the originals, I guess, that was really popularized it. Um, where you like you have a hand of seven cards. There's three rounds, just like in the dual version. You have a hand of seven cards. Keep one, pass the rest. Keep one from the next hand, pass the rest. It's a very basic drafting system. I don't know if there are games that did it before Seven Wonders did it like that. Probably there was, but I'm not familiar with them. Um, but now you see that in all sorts of things. Just off the top of my head, that exact same mechanism is in Blood Rage and in uh, Between Two Cities. And I'm sure it's been, I mean, it's been, it's also in Sushi Go, like lots of games use that now. Uh, it's a great mechanic, I think. It's, it's really, it's a cool way of kind of, I don't know, instead of, 
a lot of times I'll use it in games where you're dealt cards, like Terraforming Mars. Actually, a more fun way to play Terraforming Mars is instead of just keeping your cards that are given you every round is actually drafting that, that same mm -hmm. Seven Wonders style. Um, uh, so they're both drafting games, um, and they use the same symbology for the most part, and they have the same idea of when you get a resource card, it's a permanent resource that symbolizes one unit of that resource you can use yeah. again and again and again. So it has, it has similarities in that. The science is totally different. The way that they score is totally different. Okay. Um, yeah, but then other, it has the same idea of paying for resources, except you can only buy things off your neighbors. But yeah, the, the, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of similarities for sure. It's not just the name has been slapped on and the same art. There's, there's definitely a lot of similarities. But Seven Wonders Duel feels like the refined, more gamer version than Seven Wonders does. Mm. Seven Wonders feels like kind of an intro to gaming sort of game. It's, it doesn't have as much depth as, as Seven Wonders Duel does. And that's actually what yes. I like so much about Seven Wonders Duel is that it, it's still fast and it's still actually relatively simple, but there's a lot of depth. There's a lot of decision making that goes into, well, the decisions that you make in the game. <laughs> I botched that. <laughs> Man, I was doing so well and I, I botched the end. You was doing great. It's like four players per person, bro. Good callback joke, Cody. Yeah, yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, I do love the... Maybe I'm just jumping into here, the things I like about the game. But the resource function within Seven Wonders Duel, it's not something where you have a resource and then you spend it and then it's gone. It's you have a permanent resource that can only be used like once per purchase. So... If a card that you want to buy requires two brick and two wood, let's say, and you have three brick and one wood on your side, you satisfy three of the required resources, but you don't spend those. Then you can pay the difference for the one other resource you need with money, according to a certain set of, of principles. But then after you buy that card, you, you still have the, the resources in your city to use for a following purchase. Which is interesting. I don't know if I can think of another game that implements resources like that. Seven Wonders. Does it? Yeah. No, I mean, that's what I was saying. It's exactly the same where, you, like, if you draft a resource card, that, like, if you draft a brick card, you have a brick that you can use, uh, like, sure. every single turn. Whenever you want to buy another card, you use that brick. Yeah, um, it's it's not something you spend like Catan. You know, it's 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 the resources function pretty much the same as they do. Okay. In Seven Wonders. Well, I, I I guess I just like that no matter what. And I associate that with Seven Wonders. Duel. Right. But outside of the Seven Wonders <laughs> universe, are, are, <laughs> I don't know if I could think. I don't of know. I mean, Elysium is kind of close like in the sense that you have to satisfy a requirement, but you don't have to spend one of those that satisfy it. You can spend something else that's kind of yeah. similar ish, but you're still yeah. spending something. So it's different. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure there are other things like that, but yeah, nothing comes to mind. Just another cool way to use resources. Well, it's basically just, it's almost just like a requirement you have to meet to play a, to, to buy a card. It's not like you're spending resources to gain a card. It's just a requirement a you have to meet point. to acquire a card. So like Terraforming Mars has that then, right? Tons of games have that if you want to, if you want to break it down to that general of a yeah, description. Yeah, sure. So. That's a good point. I guess it's just a different way to view the resource. However, you still have money in Seven Wonders Duel that you can spend. It's very important. Yeah. Which does uh, run out. <laughs> there's <laughs> there was a cooler word I was going to say. Finite amount. Like there's a almost. finite amount of money. Is that what you mean? Yeah. You know, allocate, spend. You know, those fancy money words that people use sometimes. Oh, you mean like. It's it's like it's something that you actually spend as opposed to the resources which De you don't deplete. How about that? It's a That's depletable a resource. Yes. Whereas brick brick is indepletable, undepletable, <laughs> indeplet indeed depletable, in unindepletable. Un okay. You know what? <laughs> it's just yeah, we're off the rails today, like, son. What are we even talking about? <laughs> what? <laughs> I, I, so I think what the what I love most about the game is the very core design of the drafting. The drafting is genius, where you have this 
kind of pyramid of cards or whatever. It can be kind of a different shape of cards. Half of them are face up, half of them are face down. And, uh, and uh, there's only two people and every turn somebody's going to take a card. And so the whole game is kind of weighing the options of what do I need versus what do I not want to let the other person get as well yeah. as... You know, do I take this card that is going to open up that card for them, or do I take this one that is maybe better for me, but it's gonna let two hidden cards slip over for them to pick from? You know, there's so many pro, yeah. there's so many weighing the pros and cons every time you draft a card in this game, and that's something that is just an amazing core to the game. I think it can add a lot of stress in a good way to the game, where you're sitting there and you have to make your draft, and you're like, ah, oh, dang, okay, if I go this way. I'll get something I really want, but then I open up these possibilities to the other person. And but if I go this other way, maybe I don't get something as nice, but then no matter what, the other person isn't going to get something good. Yeah. And it's, um, it's just mind blank. I was going to say something really intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> nice try, bud. <laughs> oh, oh, no, no. Um, some of the special powers you can get from the seven wonder from your, your seven wonders give you another turn yeah. instantly. And the, that can be such a powerful thing in this game. Because instead oh, of being yeah. forced into this, you always go back and forth taking cards. If you're forced into a position where you don't want to open up a card for the other person, if you have a seven wonder you can use that has that take another turn, you can draft a card, trigger that ability, and then take another card immediately. Mm -hmm. And those, if you sit on them, can be really useful. They can get you out of tight spots. Oh yeah, if you, if you plan it correctly and use it in the right way. Yeah. But there's also kind of a component of hate drafting in the game, too, Definitely. that could actually work for you. Options within options, because maybe, maybe there's really no good options for you to choose from, or you're just not really concerned with getting a good card, and you're trying to prevent the other person from getting a good card. You can either just take the card, or even if you don't want it, you can just trash the card. Like, <laughs> let's money. say you can't afford it. <laughs> just throw it out of the game, and then you get to take yeah. two money plus whatever, which is genius. Yeah. Now, the, half the game is evaluating your options to see what's best for you, and the other half of the game is evaluating the cards that are available to take what's <laughs> best from the other person, <laughs> and then finding the blend where those two, you know, meet in the middle yeah. perfectly. That's what it's all about. But that's what I really love. This game has, I mean, it's called Seven Wonders Duel, and I feel like nowadays the duel thing gets tossed around a lot. You know, it's like this duel, that duel, whatever. But this game really does feel like it because it's such a back and forth battle, you know, of hate drafting, of comparing what you have versus what the other person has. It feels like a duel. It doesn't just feel like a two player game. It feels like a duel, especially in the aspect of the, the military section where it's literally, you know, like a tug of war back and forth uh, situation. The whole game has this dual feel, which is good. Yeah. And then there's the added stress of the, the science things. The, the science um, symbols don't really play that much into most games, I think, just because it's so hard to actually get a victory yeah. out of them if you're trying to get six of the different ones. Uh, but if you can, I mean, th th it is still an aspect you have to be aware of. If the other person has been getting a bunch of science things, maybe they're not doing super well in terms of other cards, but you can be so close to winning. And if they happen to uncover through whatever pattern like you you take a card and then you flip over two blank cards that you didn't know what they were going to be and one of them happened to be just the symbol the other person needed it's like ah you still have to be pretty careful yeah which like what i said earlier is exactly what happened to me in the military thing during yeah. that, that last game it was like i invested so much into the points and i got lazy on the military and she beat me for that reason then my points were null they didn't matter at all you know so i like these kind of uncommon sudden death aspects of the game where it's like you have to focus on getting points because probably the game will come down to who has more points but it might not mm -hmm. and so you can't get too lazy on the other aspects of the game so yeah, yeah i agree i like that um I, yeah. I will say one thing unless you have i, I want to say one kind of negative ish thing so i don't know if that's sure a good time. i was just going to ask so go for it yeah um i mean i do like that uh, every game of this feels kind of different but at the same time, it starts to feel samey. Now, maybe this is maybe I'm not the best example of this because, like I said, I haven't had a lot of gaming options over the past few months, so I've been playing this quite a bit. 
Mm -hmm. But it does start to feel a little samey in the way that maybe like Scythe does, for example, where you kind of get your rhythm almost. This game's a little, a, a little bit better than Scythe in that sense because the layout of the cards is going to be different every single time. So you have to think about it. So the options will be different, but you still think about the game the same way every time. Um, as opposed to a game like Dune Imperium or something where every game is just going to be has the potential to be radically different because there's so many different things, so many different avenues you can pursue within the game that you mm. can have totally different experiences in different games. Seven Wonders Duel is a little more monochromatic than that. It's not really a big yeah. negative point because it's such a good game. Um, and like I said, it is relatively simple. And so for a relatively simple game, you can't expect all these avenues of possibility. Um, but just with how much I've played it, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm definitely ready for an expansion. You know, like I want the, especially the Pantheon expansion. Like I, I'm definitely at a stage where I'm ready for that because I've really, I think I've seen everything the base game has to offer and it's still good, but it's like, let's spice it up a little bit. It needs a little spice, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I would, I would disagree with the scythe comparison. Got to, got to defend my I know, boy I here know, I know. B- because I, I really don't think scythe is that predictable necessarily or samey because I mean, you're going to get a different player each time or faction that you're playing as with different abilities um, and then combine that with a combination of a... Okay, combine with a combination. <laughs> Man, we're, Pair that with... We're just <laughs> obliterating the English language today. We're great. Together. We're great today. Uh, pair that with whatever... Ah, oh, dang, what's it called? <laughs> player mat? Pair that with whatever player mat you get, which is going to have different functions for combinations of top actions and bottom actions it really is a a big unique puzzle i feel like you solve every time and i've played like one to two hundred games of scythe and it still feels like a a fairly unique experience every time and even within that there's a bunch of different strategies you have to analyze and paths you can go down so with seven wonders duel (laughs) bringing it back i I agree that it is pretty pretty samey after a while there's there are some different ways you can approach it like the one time that I decided to just go for military just for fun and ended up panning out in an interesting way. And that, that was kind of a refreshing take on it. But even so the game itself breaks it down into the same kind of three predictable stages, like era one, got to get your resources. Cause if you don't have resources, you can't get stuff. Well, but era two, even that start focusing your game. And then three is just kind of finalizing. Even that is not totally true because you could actually pursue a money strategy instead. Like you could pursue a yellow card strategy instead of a resource strategy. But in general... But then you have maybe two options, and that's about it. A game is not going to play really differently from any other play of Seven Wonders Duel, right? Every time you play the game, you know exactly what kind of experience you're going to get. Whereas other bigger, more in-depth games can deliver different experiences every time you play them. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I mean, that's just part of the nature of the game. It's not necessarily a bad thing. So... Yeah, well, I'll jump in with my negative because, th- yeah, there is kind of that. But I feel like maybe that could be rectified with expansions. For sure. And I have the, uh, uh, I think it's the Agora expansion on the way. So I'm excited to oh. give that a try. I will be pursuing Pantheon first. So that'll be interesting. Do it. Do it, homie. Then we can pair them and see how they go. We can do a four player uh, player the- version. <laughs> Sign me Seven Wonders Duel. That'd be pretty great, actually. I don't even know how that would work. We'll we'll figure that out when we get Off there. Off air. Is my my main complaint with the game is a Castles of Burgundy esque complaint hmm, in that okay. there is a lot of maintenance that goes into the game. This is a pretty quick playing game. Like you're maybe looking at thirty minutes to forty five minutes, depending on how efficient you get at it. Possibly even faster. I don't know. But the to start the game, you have to take your three decks of cards and then you have to remove three cards from each of those decks and then shuffle and then you have to take the extra little uh guild cards take a certain number of those and then shuffle them into the age three deck and then every round you have to follow this weird pattern of laying down a certain number of cards and then laying either face up or face down the opposite layer of cards next to them and i suppose it doesn't really take that much time but for the gaming experience that Seven Wonders Duel gives you, I wish there was some 
way to streamline that and make it a little bit faster. So I agree in general that the ratio of setup and upkeep to actual game playing should, it does, it still weighs in the favor of actually playing the game, but the ratio is maybe off. It, it should be a little bit more dramatically. And mm -hmm. yeah. However, I think it's, it's interesting when you set up like in between the stages, when you're setting up the next stage, it's, interesting to see which cards get flipped face up and you can already kind of be thinking and, and, and plotting sure. and scheming a little bit whereas with castles of burgundy it's like who cares just some more tiles you know like yeah it's different but yeah, not really like the only thing that's really ever exciting <laughs> is like are there any are the animals that i need showing up this round or not so <laughs> yeah but I, yeah. I get what you're saying there's the, the ratio is off a little bit it definitely is yeah well here's the deal I feel like there's not much more to say about that, but I'm excited to get on to our next segment. You want to move on? You want to do it? Yeah, man. Let's do it. We got we got something. We got some fun, something new, something interesting. We're being inventive and creative. Yeah, man. Something I feel like we were both excited about when we got this idea, and we we're looking forward to recording this week, which is why we dedicated 50 minutes to make sure that we can <laughs> actually start recording <laughs> within our time frame. I think. Uh, I don't know. Who should, who should hit it off? Who should explain this? So, yeah, kind of the, like, we wanted to do something a little more unique, a little more interesting. And I, somewhere in, our, somewhere in the, the dregs of our document of, with all of our ideas was like this board game titles, what should they really be called, or something. Something you added to it once. And we started yeah. playing around with that idea. Like, okay, how can we do this? You know, this could be fun. And so what we're going to do is we'll, we each picked five games and... Then the challenge was for each of us for those 10 games to come up with an alternate name for the game that describes the game in a way that we see fit. Um, maybe a bit more comically so than the, the real game is named. Um, so that's what we're going to do. Are we going to go through your the five that you picked first? Uh, yeah, I think that was the plan. I mean, we'll just go, I guess we'll just say number, number 10, number 9, go down. Mm -hmm. It's not really ordered, it's not even though, a list. So maybe let's yeah. not worry about no. that. Yeah, it's not a list. I, I will say a disclaimer for mine. Uh, most of mine just ended up being more like taglines as opposed to like an actual title. No, I, but I, I think mine's that, kind of the same. That's just how it worked out for me. I think mine's kind of the same. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Well, so Pandemic is our first game, right? Yeah. Should, should you go what's, first what's since your... you did the first five or should I go first? You, you should All go right. first just because. I don't know. Do it. Pandemic, I would rename to cubes and boredom because to me that just totally epitomizes that that title is a full description of everything that happens in that game there's cubes and nothing interesting is happening uh it's so true it's so true man my okay i'll just jump in that because mine was kind of similar cube towns rise of the alpha gamer rise of the alpha gamer is so true man this game like created the alpha gamer yeah. It really did, because you you might have five people playing the game, but let's be honest, only one person's playing the game, son. It's really true, and if they're not, they're just like sitting there like bare white knuckles, like, I'm not going to tell them what to do, I'm not going to tell them what to do, don't do that. <laughs> uh, well, the, the irony of this is, I think this is often recommended as sort of a, a gateway game or a starter game for people who are new to the hobby, but if you're... If you're an experienced gamer and you're taking this to people that haven't really gamed before, like, of course you're going to be like, oh, yeah, you should do this, then we'll go here, and then you do that, and then we'll do this. Yeah. So thanks for playing. <laughs> Basically. <It's been> fun. <laughs> yep, and, thanks for playing my game with me. You know, even without that, it's still a boring game. I'm just going to, that's just how I feel about it. It's just <laughs> it not, is. I just don't like it, man. There's just not much to it. We'll just have to give the legacy games a try, yeah. see what all the fuss is about. Well. I, love our, I love our silence where I'm like, I feel like you're the one who's obligated to segue, so I'm just like refusing to. <laughs> to okay, fine. Effect. They our next game. Our next game is Brass Birmingham. Brass Birmingham. What's your dank title for this? Actually, this one is my most dank title, I think. It's not even that really? funny. Okay. It's just my the one I'm it's an actual title. I would I would rename oh. it Nebulous Networking. Ooh. because it's oh, right. nebulous kind of meaning like it's kind of like vague and difficult to grasp the actual meaning definition. And then this game is all about networking. And so kind of what I'm getting at is that the networking is so 
kind of convoluted, it's so complicated that it's just like, it's hard to actually get a grasp of. And so for me, the, the, the thing I struggle with with this game is like about halfway through the game, I've finally like figured out how all the networking works, <laughs> but then I don't play the game for like another three or four months. And I sit back down, I'm like, I was gonna take half the game again for me to remember how the I networking. Know, man. Yeah, so. It's, a, it's, a, it's kind of a lifestyle game, I think. Definitely. All right, for me, I got, <clears throat> you ready for this? I'm ready, man. The most metal game of Ticket to Ride you've ever played. All right, that's pretty good. <laughs> Very good. This game it's is, literally metal. Come it, on, son. It almost is like Ticket to Ride in just the, a little, the littlest bit because you are creating networks and you're using cards that are location-based to do so. And so it, it, it has the, a little bit of relation to that, not just in theme, but also in mechanic yeah, a little bit. It really does. It makes me curious how much influence, yeah. like if Ticket to Ride didn't exist, would Brass Birmingham exist? Well, the, the other question is, how similar is Brass Lancashire to Ticket to Ride? Because Birmingham well, is based on Lancashire, right? Yeah, I think they're, they're very similar games, though. It's more Brass Birmingham is just like the second edition, like revised. Yeah is more the concept, okay. but I also haven't played Lancashire, so there so you go. what do you know, actually, Cody? What do you know? What What do I know about it? Yeah. No, don't go into that. Uh, we don't have time for that. Okay. What's your next one? <laughs> Let, let's just go to our next game. <laughs> Real good on the segues there, buddy. <laughs> Better than the last one. <laughs> yeah, that was. Uh, well, number three, or number eight, depending on how you're progressing. It's not numbered. It doesn't matter. Nope. Our third one is Arc Nova. Arc Nova. This one's definitely yeah. a tagline for me. So I'm just going to say Arc Nova, good luck scoring any points. Any points <laughs> that aren't That's negative, brutal. good luck. Unless you win the game, you probably won't score any points. <laughs> that is so brutal. <laughs> this game makes, so you, true, it makes you feel so bad about yourself, especially because you actually kind of feel like you're doing well. And then somebody else just like all of a sudden wins. And then the game's like, you got negative 22 points. <laughs> <laughs> this is a game that... If you're anything but first at first place, you just go away sad. Yeah. You just feel bad about and yourself. And most games aren't like that, really. Even Catan isn't, isn't really like that. It's kind of, it kind of is. But most games aren't. Most games are still pretty satisfying. And Arc Nova is just like, it's just brutal. I don't know. I like it, though. It's the, it's the game that makes you sad. And that, 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 is, not my, that is not my title. <laughs> no. My title is... Tom Vassell said it was good. <laughs> That's true, though, isn't it? I feel like it's true. We've, we've talked about this a little bit, but like, I wonder yeah. how popular it would be without his endorsement. Yeah, I really do, too. Because it, in, in my honest opinion, it should not be number four on the geek. It's just, it isn't a number four Time game. will tell. Time will tell. Give it a few more years and, and see what happens. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll see where it goes. As long as it doesn't, Let as long as Gloomhaven doesn't drop below it. Yeah, that would that would be a weird world we'd be living in, Nate. I wouldn't want to live in that world, Cody. I'm just gonna say. It. Hey, do we need to talk, man? Is there? <laughs> Let's talk about the number four. Hey, my segues are good. <laughs> Actually, this is I have I have something of a segue here for you. Arc oh. Nova was a game that was played up, and we were disappointed by. This Quacks is the opposite. You're right. Yeah. Is well, I guess Quacks was also kind of played up, but we were, in, we were surprised by how good it was. Yeah. Quacks of Quedlinburg. Despite the hype, we were still surprised. Yeah. What you what you got for this? Quacks of Quedlinburg. I would just rename this simply, What are the Odds? Because <laughs> the best moments in this game are where you are thinking about what white chips are left in your bag, counting them, yep. counting the other chips in your bag. You're like, okay, what are the odds? And then you actually <laughs> do the math. You're like, all right, it's worth it. Or, no, nah, I just can't do it. I just can't do it. Yeah. It's such a mind game, and it, it's I love it. It's good. Yeah, I'm I'm coming at you with a potluck for pagans. Potluck for pagans. Potluck for pagans. Uh, yeah, I thought you were gonna laugh at that. Now I'm kind of. Oh, sad. I will. When, I, just, I mean, <laughs> I am now, but I, I have to. Uh, I have to puzzle it. A potluck for pagans. Yeah. Well, see. Because it's it's almost literally a potluck, right? Like you have a pot, and then it's just the luck of whatever pot comes out. Potluck. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, what did you think I was saying? No, I know I heard that. I was just I wasn't splitting the word up into its other parts. Oh, I was just yeah, yeah. But then usually potlucks are like at church, right? But these are like 
quack witch doctor thing. Yeah, so the pagans. Okay. And so it's alliteration. So potluck for pagans. Yeah, it's very yeah. funny. Laugh at me. It was just a little too nebulous. Cody. That's the problem. <laughs> Dang it, man. <laughs> nebulous networking up in here. Good callback joke, Cody. Yeah, thanks, thanks, thanks. thanks. <laughs> hey, what, what we got up next? Another game that perhaps surprised us with how good and dank, literally dank it is. In the Hall of the Mountain ah, King. Yes. Okay, dank. Got it. Yes, okay, literally. Yeah, there's yeah, good. tunnels and stuff. It's dank. In the Hall of the Mountain King. Okay. This one, I, I'm not too proud of my title on this one. I feel like it was... Oh, okay. And I'm, fact, I'm very proud of mine, so what do you have? I don't think you'll even get what I'm getting at here, and it's, it's not a funny one or anything. I would just rename this <laughs> a lot for a little. What I mean okay. by that is, because the, the biggest feeling I get from this game is that you do so much, you try so hard, but you get such little progress from it, you know? Like just building one tunnel that's worth really any points takes up like half or all of your resources and you already have to go back and draft more trolls. So I feel like you get, the, the resources are so few and you just dedicate so much, but the, the outcome you get so little because you're just like, hmm. you get like one little section of tunnel for investing so much. Yeah. All I have to say, Nate, is just be better, son. Is that your be title? better at this game? Is that your title? What what was that? I Is that your it. title? Yeah. No, that's no. I was just saying, be better. Like if you're complaining about not getting enough out of the game, you just got to play it better, son. Yeah, that's great. Thanks, Cody. Yeah, thanks. Anyway, my title is. <clears throat> dig a tunnel. Dig dig a tunnel. Also, how is Ark Nova ranked 500 places above this? <laughs> it's, it's to be fair, Ark Nova is more. The, it, it, it sits better on people's gaming palettes than in the Hall of the Mountain King does. In the Hall of the Mountain King, mm. is just a little too weird. It's a little too funky. Now, it's still good enough that it gets recognition in the top thousand, but it's, it's just a little weird to be mainstream, you know? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah. At least, you, at least you end the game with points, no matter what. Well, can't argue with that. Know what I'm saying? Can't argue with that. Yeah. <sighs> All right, let's get let's get through my let's get through my five, man. Yeah. So the first one up has already been mentioned on this podcast, and that is Whoa. Ticket to Ride, dude. Now you have to start. Now I have to start. Okay, we're yeah. switching. Mine is the least metal game of Brass Birmingham. Yeah. I've okay. Ever played. <laughs> <laughs> now that Cody is a good callback joke. <laughs> yeah, son. <laughs> uh, mine's pretty boring in comparison with that. I just said set collection. Now with an overused theme. Which might not actually be entirely true because I don't know, maybe, I don't know how overused the theme was, but when, when Ticket to Ride came out, maybe it already was overused. I'm not sure. It definitely is now, though. Doesn't, I don't really think of set collection when I think of this game, though. No, no, no okay, well, no, 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 I was saying set collection now with an overused theme. Or you just, you're just, we're not talking about theme anymore, you're just talking about set collection. Yeah, well, it's just, I... I feel like it's not really set collection. It's just you get you get some cards and then you pay them. It's not like you're you're keeping them at the end of the game. Well, you're collecting sets and then spending them. All right. In the comments, is Ticket to Ride <laughs> a set collection game? That is a good game? question, though, isn't it? But you are collecting sets. And I feel like if you're collecting sets, it's set collection, Cody. I, you know what? Let's see, let's see what BoardGameGeek classifies this as. That's a good, that's a good way to go. Uh, do 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 mechanisms here we go Nate. oh dang set collection right there at the bottom <laughs> at the bottom though so you're you're somewhat uh, it's so it's validated. the least yeah. much farther up is hand management and that's, that's fair that's what i would call this that's fair so yeah anyway okay no. uh number six. Oh no sorry that was number six number seven but they're not numbered is meadow <laughs> they're not they're not numbered, but they are. Okay. Meadow. This one's okay for me. Cute critters, boring game. <laughs> mine's mine's kind of along the same the same line oh, yeah? a little bit. Mine says, these cards are too pretty to be given interesting text abilities. <laughs> Cause that's the problem with the game. Actually, I think the game is great, except that the actual cards themselves just are so boring. They look great, I respect but that. they're boring. That that's a good that's a good title. You, so good that let's just move on to the next yeah. one. Well, you know, we, we, we basically had the same title on that one. So oh, this one will be divisive. Yeah. Nidavellir. 
Yeah, I thought long and hard about this one, okay. Nate. Okay. And here's what I got for you. Dag Nabbit, Nate, why don't you like this game? <laughs> if you renamed a game that and I saw it in the store, I would buy it. I just would, you know. <laughs> and then I'd be very disappointed when I opened it. I feel like you're just obliged to buy it at that point. I would rename this game Four Ways to Count. <laughs> Did you say four ways to count? Yeah, four different ways to count. That's because that's that's Joke's all this on game you. is. There's five different five different colors in this, man. Is there? <laughs> it's ironic because you can't count. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no. There's green, purple, yellow, or like orangish and blue. Green, purple, orange, and red. Red. I don't or maybe think that's what red you by orangish. No, the orangish is the weird one that you only collect a few of. You're there's right. Green, there is red. I forgot. There green, was red. purple. Yellow, blue, red. Yeah. yeah, I forgot there was red. So All right, learn well, to count, son. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Champions of Midgard. Uh, I've got... <clears throat> you'll never feel cooler rolling dice. Mine is, is somewhat along the same lines. I call yeah. this the permissible dice combat game. I almost say... The, the, the what? The permissible dice combat game. Because in general, dice okay. combat... Is bad, i.e. Ah, Battle Lord, second edition. Yeah. So I'm saying this is the permissible dice combat game. And even then, kind of only with the Valhalla expansion, but base is permissible. Yeah, it it really kind of is a Marathrash meets Euro. Yeah, no, it is. It, it is. Because hmm. everything about the game is kind of Euro-y. Worker placement, collecting resources, spending resources, whatever... But then it all comes down, all the big points come down to checking dice. So yeah, I know. <laughs> it's a weird, it is a weird combo. Strategically checking dice. Oh, for sure. All right, last, but actually, yes, least. <laughs> actually, that's is. not true because Pandemic is on this list. Last but not oh, quite least about that. is The Crew. Yeah. I, I'm proud to name this one the most uninteresting, interesting game in the world. The most uninteresting interesting game in the world because it is interesting right it's an interesting concept yeah but it's game, uninteresting. yeah it's not that great it's really not yeah i'm sorry <laughs> i'm on the hate train yeah i would rename this on board. A, a guide to hating your friends or making them hate you because this has <laughs> this is like so we talked about alpha gaming in pandemic this game is like the alpha gamers nightmare because you don't. You aren't allowed to know what's in other people's hands, and if they make one mistake, it could like ruin the whole round. Oh yeah, you just so, be like, "Why did you play yeah. that?" And so somebody, why would you do that? Somebody who doesn't understand all the nuance to uh, trick taking could totally <laughs> just ruin a session <laughs> yeah. of this and yeah. make people hate each other. So yeah, it really is very true. That was fun. Well, that, that, was, that was fun. fun. You know, this could almost be a somewhat regular segment. We just pick another 10 games we and could, say what they should be. Yeah, we could come back to it uh, a few episodes from now or something. That'd be fun. Yeah, or even just make it its own thing. I don't know what that would look like. Something with a visual component where we can like graphically edit the make like, a more, the, yeah. the picture of the game and then change the title. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, or maybe even like kind of incorporating whatever the joke is about what you've renamed it. Yeah. But. That sounds like a lot of work, man. You know, at whatever point we have a Patreon and we can hire an employee to do graphic design for us, yeah, then we'll we, do it. We keep coming back to this, like, whenever we have a Patreon thing. We need a list called whenever we have a Patreon list <laughs> for all the things we're going to do. Uh, let's just start a Patreon. It'll just sit there with probably two cents in it. As long as you don't have okay. to pay for it, I'm down. Yeah. All right. Yeah, at that point, somebody gave us two cents, so that's cool. All right. Cody. Yeah, man. Is there any other last bits of wisdom you'd like to share with the people who are, for some reason, still listening to this? Um, do Boardlandia's March Madness matchup <laughs> board game bracket challenge thing. <laughs> And like... you, too, can have a chance at winning a gift card. <laughs> do you get five? You got $10, right? Yeah, I did. That's right. Wait, no, wait to spend it on something nice. Yeah, you already offered to sell it to me last episode. Yeah, speaking um, of which, you want to buy it? No, no, I don't. Dang. Okay. I would just like to say, I, I, I feel like I should mention that, for those of you who don't know, 
I've been in Europe for the past five months and I do not have that many games at my disposal. And so that was why this every episode for like the past 10 has been like, well, here's the list of games I played again, <laughs> because I just have a few of them that just get played over and over again. And then if I'm lucky, yeah. I sneak in a new one or two. But that's my life. That's my life. It's like you're becoming more cultured within the world, but less cultured within board games. I think it's a good exchange temporarily. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for now. <laughs> Definitely not sustainable, but yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that was fun. And adieu. And remember, proof of purchase tokens are the most useless thing you can include in a board game. Thanks for tuning in, folks, to the Tabletop Shop podcast featuring me and the other dude. Say hi, Nate. I don't know what's going on, but I hope this ends soon. Well... Hey, if you guys want to, like, send us an email, you can do that at tabletopshop23 at gmail.com and at Instagram at tabletopshop23. And like and subscribe and comment and click the bell and all those things that I, I don't know. Click everything. Did I say all this stuff? Say something cool, Nate. That the line I said earlier was my description of Race for the Galaxy. Okay, cool. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>